The Eric Zane Show podcast has begun from the Impact Power Sports Studio. Thank you so much for being here. I just can't handle that amount of headroom. I just can't do it. Hang on. The ADHD in me has to has to handle, you know, take care of that. Welcome to each and every one of you. Thank you so much for being here. A daily show where I discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures. Uh, some time ago, I uh, talked to you about how my plan going forward, getting ready for this, uh, my new adventure, my, my change in my life, if you will. Having to start doing morning drive radio again for the first time in over five years. That I'm like, okay, I'm ready for this. Uh, in order to be totally prepared, I'm going to start waking up earlier. <clears throat> and um, boy, I was I was gung ho with that. Uh, and then, like the first five days, it was perfect. And I I haven't done it since, so that's weird. Leave it to me to screw that up. <coughs> now I still have. Okay. Saturday, Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Still have nine days to do this. So that needs to happen. All right. But uh, talk about a colossal failure. It's just, you, you know, you're kind of like just laying in there and like, ah, oh, God. Should I do it? No, nah, let's just set the alarm for 620. Let's get a good solid nine hours of sleep. Boy, th those days are going to end. Uh, for some reason, I don't know what's up here. Uh, ben shows the emojis of birthday cake and celebration. Does that mean it's your birthday? I don't know if it necessarily is. He did that, and then uh, not. Then everybody goes, happy birthday, Ben, including Kenny, of course. Kenny's all about birthdays. With his disaster earlier in the week where he announced his birthday on the show. He actually, the first thing he typed was uh, his salute to himself and let everybody know that it was his birthday. And he thought that because he did it in like two emojis that it would be like um, passable, appropriate. And it's, it's so not. And he was of the opinion that, oh, well, I only did it with two emojis. I said, well, it doesn't matter what you did. You, you it, God damn it. Why would you do that? He says, now he's writing, <laughs> and you ranted about it for 25 minutes. Yeah, much to the delight of everyone here. Okay? And you then stuck your thumb in your mouth and pouted. I, there was one point you said, I guess I just can't say anything out of here. Some of the uh, uh, most childlike behavior we had witnessed, the most childlike we be, uh, the most childlike behavior that we witnessed from Kenny is the latest bit of behavior. That's that's how it works. Okay. Everybody loved it, and then uh, some other morons got in trouble by telling me to move on. You don't. Ep Okay, an even bigger sin than telling the world it's your birthday is trying to tell me what to do. Um, you, you don't want to do that. So basically, um, Johnny B. Zero writes accurate. It was absolutely accurate. So Ben starts all this trouble today by announcing it's his birthday. And, that, and then Ben says, it's not my birthday. And then Kenny writes, ah, then you shouldn't use those emojis. 
Well, I think he's kidding, Benny. Benny or Kenny. You don't have one eye. You're not Benny. You're Kenny. Kenny's like, yeah, don't joke. Don't be funny. You got to be serious. I want Ben Zost, not Ben Glaze. Still, the most outrageous thing that has ever happened on this show was actually during this show when I'm for two hours, all I do is fuck around. I was talking to him on the phone. This is the last time I talked to him. He's not allowed on the show anymore. He made everybody uncomfortable because he was sobbing into the phone. So many tears left his face and went into the phone that the battery caught on fire and it burned his face. That's how hard he was sobbing. It was way uncomfortable. And he goes, I don't want Eric Zane. I want Eric Zatunian to do this show. I want him to talk about how much he loves me. So bad. It was so bad. Go back and listen to it. Go back and listen to it. It was it was unbelievable. Phone actually caught on fire. You could hear it burning. Oh my god! It's burning my face so bad. It fucking says Samsung on the side of my head now. It's burnt into my face. But I don't care. I want to tell the world. I want to tell the world that I'm hurt so bad. Kenny writes, I used to message you when it was listeners and sponsors birthdays and you'd thank me and then you'd wish the person a happy birthday and move on. Now you're just a dick about everything. I'm not a dick about everything. There's a lot of things I'm not a dick about. Some things I'm quite dickish about, like people announcing their birthdays. I can't believe there was a time. I don't recall this. I don't even know if this is true. Uh, when you would say, hey, hey, uh, by the way, uh, 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 Pete in fucking Illinois, it's his birthday today. He turned 26. You're going to wish him. Oh, boy. Danny Porter. He's over with uh, A&D Cleaning. They're your sponsor. You're going to have to uh, wish him a happy birthday. I, I, I find that impossible to believe uh that is yet another lie uh bestowed upon us by the greatest liar on the planet that would be kenny kenny is actually lying to us now about like like you had some role here for research how would is how is it that you would know listeners and sponsors birthdays did you have like a notebook oh man look hold on man let me wake up here start the day get myself a little pick me up in the morning fucking milkshake hold on i can't start my day till i whip out a couple games of frogger all right i'm gonna have a nice conversation with Derek. Hey, Derek, how are you, buddy? You don't have to answer. I can just tell what you're, what you're telling me. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so, so how are you? So then after his conversation with Derek, when it's just Kenny talking, uh, he wanders over to his uh, notebook to look at show birthdays and pass it along to me. Amanda says, Ben, celebrating National Women's Day. Uh, okay. Uh, Johnny B. Zero referring to Kenny sending me birthdays. Damn, Kenny, that's a little much. He's not a dick. Oh, uh, Kenny on, Johnny on Kenny calling me a dick. He's not a dick about everything. He's been in your corner a lot of times. Kent says, I still love you, Kenny. I love Kenny, too. Kenny's like one of my favorite people on the planet. You just have to be willing to tell him to shut the fuck up occasionally. Tyler says, can we please include 
the um, birthday beat up on the next not the best of. Absolutely. <clears throat> I have to write down the date. Today is the 8th, so that would be the... I don't even know what day. It, uh, was it Monday or Tuesday? I, I, I couldn't tell you. The only birthdays I can celebrate are children's and meat and uh, and meatheads. Nobody else, says Patrick. Which, by the way, if you are a member on Patreon, I actually posted my dad's address for his birthday. His birthday is a week from Sunday. So if you want to send my dad a birthday card, I made it available there, his actual um, address. I figured I would, I would, I mean, that's still a lot of people. I mean, if uh, uh, 277 people send him a birthday card. Oh my God. I shouldn't say 277. It's not that high. There are, there are some who are signed up for Patreon, but they don't get any of the content until I actually uh, allow it. I think there's 225, 270 signed up, but some of them didn't pay. There's a tier on there. It's a little known tier where you can sign up and be on it, but you don't get any content unless if I click when I'm setting it up with uh, available to everyone. I don't even know why anybody would do that. Why would you even sign up if you're not even getting anything? Whatever. Uh, all right. Megan says, I'm in charge of the school carnival today. I'll take all the prestige empties now. I don't know what that means. Yeah, we have to include, you know, you could have an entire show on Kenny. You've got the TV incident. You've got Z-Speed Mobile Mechanic. You've got the Banana Worms incident. You've got, um, I want to be, I want the Eric Zaitunian show, not the Eric Zane show, quote. And now we have the birthday incident. These are five major catastrophes that require our attention. There was one time I had him on here on the phone and the quote was, I don't want to be your content. I want to be your friend. And I'm like, oh, no, I, I flip that around. No, 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 there are no friends. What are you talking about friends? Who wants, who wants friends? Friends can fuck off. Friends are stupid. Who wants friends? No, no, you got to go solo, lone wolf. Uh, Kenny says, if anyone thinks I ever cried, then y'all need to have your heads examined. L O L O L. Wow. No, you did. You actually wept and you destroyed your phone because of the tears. Aram says that was at the height of the Zaniacs. I don't know what he's talking about. Now Kenny is, um, telling Johnny B zero to shut up. Uh, Johnny says, why should I shit up? I'm spitting truth. Eric is absolutely being a dick and he knows it. <laughs> now that's true. But in my dickishness, it is my dickishness is always on with the, uh, the premise of I, I I'm trying to be silly. Okay. I don't like to actually like, uh, uh do what I'm doing right now and, and break the spell of the bit. But sometimes Kenny likes to do that. Like he'll go out of his way to try to submarine a bit. These are, these are all things that that silly, silly head will do. He will submarine a bit. Um, and also he will demand attention. All right. A classic textbook case of it was the uh, the birthday day. I've got this all figured out now. Starts out with announcing his birthday, knowing that I'm going to beat him up. I beat him up. And then about 20 minutes later, he'll go, I guess no one loves me. Or I guess I'll just be quiet now because I can't say anything. 
I guess people just hate me or something like that. So that uh, 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 various audience members, uh, a.k.a. Maureen, will go there, there and like pat him on the head. There, there. There, there, big guy. Come on. We love you. Uh, it's so embarrassing. <clears throat> um, excuse me. Hollywood Joe is here. He says, I feel like everyone knowing everyone's birthday is a stalker move. I can barely remember yesterday, let alone multiple people's birthdays. Well, yeah, Kenny has Kenny is the sweetest, most congenial stalker. You know, there's some Zaniac blood in Kenny. I don't know if you know this about Kenny. He uh, he and Amanda are both like moles to the Zaniacs. And that's okay. I love them for it. Anything I do. I mean, he's got an entire different friend list of all of these, of all these losers. Uh, and he, you know, that's how it works there. So there is some stalker blood in Kenny, but it's, it's harmless. It's I'm not, I'm actually not concerned about Kenny's stalker tendencies. Even though he and Amanda are stalkers, I, that type of stalking is okay because they keep it right here on the chat. And when they send me birthday updates of people. Patrick says, my mom's birthday, and probably the best joke of the show so far, my mom's birthday is in a few weeks. I'm going to tell her to fuck off. Tyler says, thank God the former Zaniacs are gone, or they would show up at Meadhead's house right now. And let me get out in front of this right now. There's going to come a day when my dad is going to go to the Rainbow Bridge to see all the dogs. Okay? For the love of God, if I hear from one of those fucking Zaniacs, I'm going to have a heart attack. Some of those losers reached out to me when Daisy died. And I was like, fuck you. Don't give me that shit. Oh, yeah, we may have our differences, but uh, really sad about Daisy. No, you're not. Shut the fuck up. I hate people that do that. No, fuck off. God damn. If any one of the Zaniacs have someone close to them that croaks, I'm not going to reach out and say, oh, uh, fuck you, but I'm sorry so-and-so died. I would never do that. Anybody who does that is a fucking phony. No, you you don't like that person for a reason. I'm not saying you celebrate the, the person's death, but whatever. It's a fucking another day. I don't give a shit. You shouldn't either. And don't contact Joanne either, you dumb fucks. I don't even know why I'm talking like that. I mean, the guy's never going to die. Give me a break. Johnny B Zero says we sent our uh, birthday card to Meathead this morning. Okay. Someone says the beat up on Kenny was on his birthday. And I'm like, well, I don't know what that is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, I'm still still dealing with a little uh, little action there. Uh, Hurricane Ashley is here. She has a big girl job now, so she can't be uh, uh, dominating the chat. Thank Christ. Yeah, she actually has a, you know, she's been reined in by the bosses. Whatever it is she does, I think she, I couldn't even tell you what the job is. I think she uh, is like a mechanic or something. Uh, you said something on Patreon this week that was very close to the truth. Kenny says, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't do well with, uh, with riddles and games. Uh, the only dickish thing Eric does is mock people's voices. I would know says, Oh, that's a great joke by Hollywood Joe. Hi, Eric. How are you? Doing good. Hollywood Joe. Oh, great. So anyway, I want to. Talk about pro wrestling and how pro wrestling should be a sport in the Olympics. Megan says, if Eric did this to me, I'd sob. Kenny is a good sport. Yeah, but th um, you have to understand, a s long standing series of events over years would have had to happen. For you to ever 
be considered for one of these beat-ups. Uh, this is earned, not just thrown out there. And the usual suspects that get hammered have done a lot over the years to inherit this type of ass kicking. Everybody knows off the top of your heads, the two biggest recipients of ass kickings on this show. It's Kenny and Amanda. And I can't, I don't know which one probably Kenny has. I think it seems like Kenny's gotten more abuse because he takes it so much more terribly. uh, Amanda gets annihilated, but she has, she's pretty tough. She's probably the tough, one of the toughest people I've ever said terrible things about. Kenny actually gets devastated and um you know it's just it's so bad it's so terrible the 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 tears thing it's like i can't handle um let's see Uh kenny says i'm not a damn mole what are you talking about oh on the zaniacs thing well I mean, any mole that's worth its salt will deny they are a mole. I know if I was a mole, I'm going to deny that shit. So, you might not be. Uh, Stevie says, who did that? They they talked to Joanne, um, says Megan. My son and I sent cards out this morning as well. Ashley says she is a mechanic for spaceships. Johnny has a great question. Why does everything have to be so cryptic and filled with riddles when it comes to Kenny? Just say what you mean, dude. Who gives a shit? Uh, Kenny says, are you on Patreon? Johnny says, Kenny, just say what you're talking about instead of dancing around it. It, it, it might be, I don't know. It might be something private. Um, on Patreon. I don't know what he's getting at either. Uh, Amanda says Aram gets it too. Aram does get beat up, but not on a level of you and Kenny. All right. And then finally, the question for Megan. Cat people. Of course, Megan is, is notorious for when we're here doing the show, you will get the oddest shit out of her mouth where she's just... Out of the blue, she's going to do... This is the Megan show. Megan does do side shows on the chat. In fact, I would say that uh, it happens fairly often. And I actually don't have a problem with it uh, for some reason. I do a little bit, but not that much. She writes, Cat people, do you feed them wet or dry food? Now, that's like a free beer and hot wing show topic. Here I am uh, spilling my guts for two hours again. And out of the blue, sweet, sweet Megan goes, hey, cat people, do you feed them wet food or dry food? And you see now, you know, they're going to go, oh, well, I, they're, you know, they're going to have to answer. It'd be like if, you know. Uh, comedians on stage and the people in front are having a conversation about wet or dry food. You would never do that. Oh my God. All right, everybody. Let's answer Megan. Cat people. Do you feed them wet or dry? I know this is a podcast and a live stream, but I gotta know. Hey, cat people. I'm asking questions about my cat. Do you feed them wet or dry? What? Kenny says if Amanda did that just now, she'd be in trouble. LOL. Well, guess what? Fuck face. She's in trouble. Why don't you shut the fuck up? I like how Kenny always tries to make it seem like the rules are like different, you know? And yes, you are right. Amanda and Kenny, if they did something like that, would get beat up. But 
Um, it's just, it's, she doesn't have as long of a track record as you do. Uh, so when I beat her up, like I am, it's not nearly as intense, but I like how Megan says, boy, if Kenny ever beat me up uh, or if Eric ever beat me up like Kenny, I would cry. Well, guess what? You're, you're uh, walking towards the line with out of the blue, uh, polling the audience about wet or dry cat food. So, I don't know. I think I think you're working your way towards a Kenny beat up. Uh, Maureen says I was going to respond to Megan's question, but didn't because I learned my lesson. Megan writes, I. Hey, I love you. You love animals. I feel like this is okay. Okay. If you say so. This is the Megan voice. It's kind of like Mickey Mouse. It's super positive and kind of goes a million miles an hour. Hey, everybody, cat food, wet or dry. Megan's the one who, like, uh, Picture something like uh, 9-11. You're walking down the streets of New York City. 999 people are staring up at the burning trade centers. Megan is there going, hey, pizza by the slice, pepperoni or cheese. You know, I mean, think about that. Hey, everyone. Kent writes, cat hair, let them grow or shave them down. Cat lovers, who washes their kitty in the sink? <laughs> Uh, neighborhood watch some kids been abducted a guy in a in a beat up old chevy van stole a child and went driving down the street everybody's chasing after the van people are crying helicopters are in the air they're finding articles of clothing on the side of the road and then they find an actual foot everybody's screaming and wailing All right. Thank you very much for being part of this show. There is some birthday talk that I actually have to get out, and that is that my wife so leans into the birthday thing, it's unbelievable. This was the uh, conversation that she uh, had with me today. She goes, okay. Birthday weekend. This is the big one. I go, okay. Tonight, um, the girls and I are going out. And I go, uh, okay. Yeah, they're taking me out for my birthday. Okay. I, that, that sounds like a plan. I'll, uh, I'll go to work. Okay, you go to work. Uh, I'm going to party my ass off. They're going to bring me home. I might have to try to take advantage of you and your useless penis. Okay, sounds good. Just let me know. Okay, bye. Uh, tomorrow is, I think she's got like another friend set that's taking her out. You know, um, I, I have like no friends. She has like sets of friends. Friend set two is taking her out. Um. And then Sunday, it's, um, see, this is where Kenny's so stupid. First of all, shut up, okay? Uh, good thing you didn't bitch at her for mentioning her birthday. Yeah, uh, it, it's totally not the same. This is a podcast, stupid asshole. And this is, that. that's in the house, so nice try. 
um, Sunday, um, it's like birthday party here. And I like, I got, I got, I, I have my ducks in a row. Okay. Uh, don't tell her, but Sarah Rook Ruck Roosh ordered me. She said, all right, fuck her. This is what you're getting her. I go, okay, what is it? What is it? Now, this woman, I have, this woman has an influence on this household. First of all, she'll kick my ass. Okay. And, uh, she's like, Diana wants this bird buddy. I go, what is bird buddy? She goes, don't you know? I go, no. It's a bird feeder. I go, we got one. She goes, no, asshole. It's not like that. It's got a camera on it. The birds go and they eat and it shoots pictures of the birds and identifies them and sends it to her phone. That's what you're getting her. I go, well, that sounds awesome. And so, yeah, I love it. She goes, yeah, buy it. I go, I will. So I did. I'm not going to argue with that. Well, it arrived. Pooh Bear sees it. It's like in a, well, she sees the package. It's, uh, you know, UPS, whatever. She goes, what's that? I go, uh, it's, I ordered something. What is it? And I said, uh, um, it's a piece of equipment for the podcast. So I threw her off the trail, but I don't know if she bought it. I wrapped that thing up yesterday. Okay. And, uh, so it's done. Now I understand there's also a hummingbird camera. Now that, oh my God, that's like on another level. You know how many times I've wanted to get, uh, uh, just a snapshot of a hummingbird. Talk about that creature alone is a goddamn miracle. They've designed military aircraft on the way the hummingbird flies. The fact that it can be traveling. You know how fast a fucking hummingbird flies? They swoop in and then stop like a video game, like an old school Sega Genesis stop, and just casually float and just eat. Incredible. Oh my God, I've got to get that. So this is part of the big Pooh Bear birthday weekend. It's the whole month, actually. You know, I don't, I don't have a say in this. Um, so she, um, and then I go, okay, so uh, what's for dinner? Steak. Sounds good. What type of cake? Ice cream cake. That's it. That's it, you know. Um, and this has to be planned appropriately. I have to get all the people that are supposed to be here here. And um, so, you know, I, uh, I did the old, hey, birthday party starts at this time. And if anybody gives me the old, um, well, we've got this going on. I'm like, I, I, look, this is the time of the party. Um, you make it. Now, if you don't, you're on your own. All right. I have, I'm just, I'm the messenger. This party happens. We eat at this time. Afterwards, cake, ice cream, presents. You're expected to get her a present. And that's it. It's not, well, can I do this first? Can I do that first? I said, no, no. Uh, you're all adults. Here's the party. You're either going or you're not going. Now, if you go, congratulations. You've made the right choice. If you don't, good luck with that. I'm not, I, I, I stay in my lane. All right. All I'm doing is making her happy. It's her birthday. And that's the end of it. Uh, I don't necessarily give a shit about my birthday but she does, and she's my wife, so it's going to be a big deal. 
I really don't know anybody who kind of walks around and tells everyone it's their birthday. Little baby boys do that. Thank you so much for being here on Facebook, X, and YouTube. I'm going to send you on your way, though. The rest of the show is available on Twitch. You go to Twitch. Uh, on. Uh, let me say that again. You download the Twitch app, and then you search Eric Zane Live. That's how you do it. And then there I am. You can give yourself a username and participate in the chat. Don't be intimidated by these dickheads. Most of them know each other. You will become friends with them too. Hopefully. Chat friends. Okay? As you can tell, there's kind of like a set of rules. You'll figure them out as you go. Some get more grace than others. Megan officially tiptoed into the less grace zone with the, hey, friends, cat food wet or dry blast she took a little bit of heat that happens you can uh, leave me an email on the shoreliner striping eric at i'm sorry shoreliner striping inbox eric at ericzaneshow.com and my patreon is available for you too uh for free just go to patreon.com slash eric zane and uh, you can sign up for seven days free. This week, a lot of uh, interesting stuff. I talked uh, specifically about my latest firing and the subsequent trolling that is happening since the firing. So annoying. Goddamn, I'm still pissed about that. Uh, not to mention, I also get specific as to where my radio show is where it will be, where you can find it, how you can listen. I'm not yet specific on that um, because, well, there's just a couple of things that have to happen um, before I can do that. I'm kind of waiting for the, hey, go ahead and tell everybody, like, you know, publicly. I mean, I guess Patreon's public, but it's behind a paywall. Anyway, there you go. Patreon.com slash Eric Zane. Thanks to everybody on Facebook, X, and YouTube. Bye-bye. Facebook and Twitch brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. Denny Porter says, fired from where? That's, I just said, you got to go to Patreon to find that out. You know, honestly, your best bet is to go back a couple of days and there's a long backstory to it. There's a lot of backstory. At this stage, it's like, God damn it, you're going to have to really dig. Go back a few days and listen to all that shit. Uh, thank you to um, Blue Frost IT for sponsoring me on X as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Still just a little bit under the weather. I have a vouch store. Vouch merges creators with small business. I have a number of products that I would like you to check out for sale on my vouch store. Vouch.store slash Eric Zane. The link is in the show notes of the audio podcast or just click on it now. Vouch.store slash Eric Zane. That's where you go. Uh, you can buy the dog supplies, the pet supplies, I should say. You can buy the coffee. You can buy the massage gun. The percussion massage gun, as it's known. It just has to be called percussion. Uh, the Camp Craft Cocktails, and uh, which is just a fantastic way to enjoy a uh, mixed drink, I'm told. And uh, the, the uh, hygiene, the tooth, the toothbrush. Uh, I've gotten a lot of positive reviews on the toothbrush. They are eight bucks. I guess the yak sticks in the pet supplies there at vouch.store slash Eric Zane. Uh, they've gotten some pretty good reviews. Rebecca loves, says that her dog loves the yak sticks. So there you go. 
Bye, bye, bye. I'm trying to sell three products, three sales on the Vouch store in March. I got two from Rebecca in February. So I'm trying to get three in March, slowly increasing the sales on the Vouch store. Great way to support the show and support small business and get something in return other than just like content. Uh, all right. Frank Fuss, my policy shop insurance. Buyinsurancehere.com is the website. Go there if you're interested in uh, getting a um, health care plan from Obamacare. Also, if you need some life insurance, I'm in the process of getting some life insurance right now. Uh, new policies because my ones, I can't believe it. I've, I've, I've been with the same policy. It's actually ending. It ends in three days. Buyinsurancehere.com is where you go for Frank Fuss. He'll help you every step of the way. He is a licensed independent insurance agent slash broker uh, working hard to keep you happy. Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV. You walk into there and uh, you're like, yeah, I've got a, uh, I got a knock, knock, knock going on in my car. It's really loud. Megan will say, do you like hot air balloons? I'm kidding. Anyway, ervines.com, ervines.com, 616-532-6600 for Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV. Smack dab in the middle of Grand Rapids, Michigan. You can't miss them. They are along 44th Street. Um... Early bird drop-off, late bird pickup. The fact that they have loaner cars you can use to uh, get you to and from wherever you want to go. Linda says, but do they sell cat food on Vouch? That's excellent. Um, Rebecca says, that was Becky, not me. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Uh, Becky bought the yak sticks and the, uh, what else did she buy? The booze. I get my Becky's and Rebecca's mixed up. Denny Porter says, Jane Fonda workout, getting old easy. You can tell Denny's only here every once in a while. Yeah, I do this every show. To kind of like loosen up my ass. Ryan, with this endorsement, I'm not kidding. Irvine's is the best damn shop I've ever been to. The staff is so incredibly nice and welcoming. Such a bright spot when dealing with repairs. I think the best part about the Irvine staff is that everybody looks like they're happy. They're enjoying themselves and I, this is going to sound ridiculous. They're clean. They look uh, vibrant, energetic. Like you go into like a grease monkeys auto shop and the guy in there is gray. He smells like anus. He looks like shit. I mean, he looks like he's uh, g- g- fucking at death's door. God damn. Not at Irvine's. They are fantastic. Great point, Ryan. I love that. Uh, while I'm here, Senor Martinez is uh, is actively encouraging you to call 616-516-8579. It is time to start scheduling the AC to be tuned up. So if you have not ever done this, you're in desperate need and you are really, really hurting your AC unit. And I mean, those are expensive. Wouldn't it be nice to have them survive a few more years and what could happen if you continue to let it rot away? It's never uh, a bad time to do this. Um, the first time I did it, he showed me, he goes, uh, yeah, so this is what it's like when a few years pass and this doesn't get done. Cause the first time I did it, let's say I bought this house in 2010 and I started working with Joe in 20, 
19? Yeah. So I'm guessing, well, I know I didn't get that done from 2010 to 2019. And he goes, yeah, this is, this is nine years of disease collecting on this thing, this dust and dirt. And it just, it's it works harder to pull the air in to cool your house. Dickhead. I go, all right, I'm sorry. Get it clean. 616-516-8579. Schedule today. It's 79 bucks. God damn, I am fucking full of sponsors today. This is great. It could be worse. I still have to talk about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more sponsors. God, life is good. And I'm adding more. Um... Berlin Raceway is coming back. Who else? Oh, I have a real tour who's going to be starting. Oh, my God. The economy is booming. That's what uh, Joe Biden talked about yesterday. Joe Biden, let me just say this. Out of the blue, here comes Joe Biden. I'm shocked to even say this. But that speech last night was fucking amazing. It was a great speech. I don't give a shit what you believe in, what you say, what you do. I I did not see that coming. I thought this was, I mean, he had his occasional gaffes and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I I don't know what happened. I, it, it, it was really good. I, I have very little negative to say about the state of the union address. Um, I don't think it's going to, um, I mean, I think you've got the, uh, people that the, uh, on the left are going to keep vote. They're going to support Biden and the people on the right are going to support Trump, but it's the ones in the middle that are undecided or, uh, or independent. And I think he did the best he possibly could to shore that up somehow. It was a good speech. Okay. By the way, it took him 30 minutes when he entered the chamber to get to where he starts speaking because of all the glad handing and bullshit that goes on. Marjorie Taylor Greene was, (laughs) she's in a, uh, bright red blazer with a red baseball hat a MAGA hat on and I mean she looked like the typical person at a Trump rally she also was wearing something in support of a uh, somebody in Texas some chick Lincoln something or other who was killed um, murdered by an undocumented illegal immigrant So, you know, it's uh, there's that whole border thing. And Biden's like, look, we had a bipartisan bill on the table that a lot of Republicans agreed would work to uh, uh, clean up the border thing. I don't even know specifically what what they mean by clean up the border. Well, my opinion, I think, is one that doesn't line up with both uh, with Democrats or Republicans. Um. To me, this needs to be an expedited, uh, not painful to the person crossing the border process. In my opinion, if people want to come into the country, it should be as uh, simple as it was when my dad came into the country. Uh, But it's so damn difficult. Um, I don't even know what. I mean, I understand the business of, well, yeah, you got to be documented and you got to be legal. And I'm all for that. However, make it easy for these people to legally enter the country. God damn, they just walked 800 miles with babies on their goddamn backs. And all they want to do is come here and work. Get as soon as I get there, we should take care of these fucking people. It should be as simple as this. All right. Stay in this hotel that we have for you. We're going to take care of you. You're going to have food. You're going to have medicine. You're going to be taken care of. Uh, we've got you arrived on this date. We have um, 
a period of time he can stay here. Let's say it's three weeks. This is the easy border plan. All right. Senor Martinez, uh, what's the plan when you get to somewhere in the U.S.? Well, my wife's going to stay home and take care of the kids. I'm going to work. Okay. Um, Do you think she might want to work some part-time hours? Yeah, maybe. Maybe at night. Okay. Well, we got you nine hours a day. Uh, what, what, what do you like to do? Well, I don't know. I'm a builder. All right. Well, there's these, these companies that are here in the lobby in these cities. All right. You sit down, interpreter there, all that shit. Okay, great. Now we've secured work for you in Spokane, Washington. And there's a uh, facility there where you can move in kind of like until you get your bearings, get a few paychecks under you, and then they're going to help you, um, find housing to actually move into your own place. So these are all steps in the process. Uh, meanwhile, uh, mom and the kids are, uh, are safe. And then um, part of this three-week plan, when you get this job, you got all your documentation, you're going to uh, learn the appropriate um, things to pass a citizenship test. And uh, boom, that's it. You're in. It's three weeks, in and out. And then you're, uh, you're, you're taken to the spot. And then there you go. They've got uh, the, the people at the place you're working will get you to and from work. This is all helping you to get your legs, you know, get your fucking sea legs of how we do it in the U.S. You're going to work. Mrs. Okay, you're going to come home from work. You're going to take care of the kids and Mrs. So-and-so. She's going to work at the restaurant. Okay, all of a sudden, are you rich? No, but you're bringing in, I don't know, $53,000 a year to start. That's not the most terrible thing. That's what people do here. Are you down? Yeah, I'm down. It's better than where I was. Okay. Boom. Problem solved. Let's do it. Instead of spending money on these goddamn fences, Jesus Christ. Let's do it right. People are going to are are not going to want to come in uh the hard way because they can come in uh into the way that they're supposed to and get to the fucking easy uh Mexican hotel. How great is that? The fact that Marjorie uh, Taylor Greene is making a big deal because one person was murdered by an undocumented person, is an, un- an undocumented criminal, is insanity. Nick writes, I just got my new lower paycheck after updating my W-4. Another $200 a paycheck to the freeloaders. Now, I don't know anything about that. I think Nick is suggesting with that comment, it's two sentences. I just got my new lower paycheck after updating my W-4. Another $200 a paycheck to the freeloaders. Nick is suggesting that the government is taking $200 of his pay and giving it to to some guy in Mexico. Now, I I, I don't know, Nick, that that doesn't sound like it's exactly as I, I would, I would be shocked if that's what's happening. I think there's a little bit more to it. I don't think it is. They just give it to freeloaders. I think that's an adjustment based on your income. That's how it's worked for, I don't know, 300 years here. Uh, Joe Martinez says that he made the Republicans look like shit. I think you're referring to Biden. Denny Porter says just for Biden to finish a sentence is a great day. Well, maybe, but... He did. He did an excellent job. All right. I had to, uh, I had to definitely talk about the state of the union. It's on a lot of people's mind minds today. And, uh, I have to say, I, I, I love to beat up Biden when he sounds like shit, but he didn't sound like shit at all. What he said was uh, on point. He was on point. He was sharp as fuck, considering. And uh, I think he's actually, uh, I think he won a lot of people over with that speech. That speech, I think, 
is enough to make it a game. All right? Enough to make it a game. Uh, Brandis says, that's why I'm here, because I didn't want to watch that shit. I don't blame you. You you leave that to me. I watch it, and then I give you the synopsis. I'm not going to sit here and play uh, bits of it. None of that shit. I'm just giving you my thoughts. I thought he did well. Well enough that I think it's going to help him in pulling. Uh, Once again, Ben Glaze is here. He's getting ready to head off to Vegas. You heard him yesterday. He's going to see two 311 concerts there. And then he's going to gamble and probably drink a little bit. Now, I've seen Ben intoxicated once where he was blackout drunk. That was at Pepino's. I don't think that's a regular thing for Ben. That type of intoxication. I, I... I, I, you know, I don't want you to be like uh, uh, Alan from the hangovers or hangover hangovers. All right. Uh, Radio. Again, we are now, let's see, today's the eighth. We're 10 days away from the launch of the new radio show. I'm not yet talking about what specifically, where specifically, but I am going to post an app for you to listen on. And it's a fantastic app. I talked about it before. Uh, You won't be able to miss it. I'll have it all next week to talk about here. I'll post it on social media. So the way I'm hoping your day works, first of all, when I announce this, I want you to like the Facebook page of the radio station. I will have my own Facebook page. Eric Zane morning show on this station. And I want you to like that too. And then I want you to download the app and listen from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Don't expect me to reinvent the wheel on this show. At least not initially. The radio station was built on music. That's not changing. It would be a remarkable shock to the system if I suddenly uh, went on the air there and stopped playing the music. That is kiss of death. That is absolutely sacrilegious. When we started on uh, GRD, we did not intend to eliminate the music in the morning. We showed up there and kind of were just getting our bearings And the uh, general manager said, I think what you guys are doing will catch on, but I think you should slowly whittle the music away. And it's like, boy, I've never heard a general manager or a program director say that. They never have trust in the talents to do that. But this one gentleman, Phil Catlett, did. We didn't even believe that. So over a period of months, we slowly but surely took the music away. And I remember there was one moment that we spoke at length going into the commercial breaks commercial break and then the commercial break ended and we spoke out of it that was the first time we did that like no music in between and no one noticed we didn't get one complaint from any of the stations no one in the audience complained we just slowly stopped playing the music that told us they were there for what we were saying as opposed to the music now i don't I can't predict if that's going to happen. I couldn't tell you that. I don't even know if I have the legs to do that. I take it back. I know I have the legs to do that. I do this. I do it for two straight hours every goddamn day. How could I not have the legs to do that? Uh, but I don't know if that's in the cards. I have no idea. I am not, I'm not doing cart in front of horse. I'm doing just get it on the air. Don't say the word fuck. And... You know, try not to uh, make your nightmares come true, which is dead air and silence and confusion and crying. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. That show happens a week from Monday, 6 to 10, right here. Um, People have said, can we watch it? Um, Not initially. I I, I don't want that type of pressure. 
Um, maybe one day down the road. Let's. It's all fucking crawl before you can walk. That's where we are right now. As long as I can key on the mic and talk and it goes over the air and I can say, uh, here's so-and-so on so-and-so. And I can say, now we're going to break for news. And now we're going to, if I can get through all of that, that's a bridge crossed. Tophus says, is there an app? Yes. I haven't shared it yet. I will. You'll know it. Uh, it'll be impossible to miss uh, me promoting the app. Rich says, dear God, let the app be better than the shitty free and hot wings one. The app is very good. It's a very good app. All right. Uh, not long ago, like earlier this week, um, down in Van Buren County, Michigan, that's a couple counties below us. Um, uh, again, um, this is hill people. Uh, well, hell where I am, it's hill people. Most of Michigan, there's nine and a half million people that live here. Most of those people live in Grand Rapids and Metro Detroit. Metro, Metro Detroit is the largest suburban metro in America. Because if you were to go where uh, Gratiot, Grosbeck, and Woodward meet in downtown Detroit and then go north and west. Those are the suburbs. It's so massive. It's like 8 million people. And then we have like uh, a million that live here. And then 500,000 over the rest of the state. That's massive. Those are the hill people. Well, this one household in van buren county the kid there's a three-year-old that he used his um hill people strength and he like kicked out the window you gotta understand van buren county toddlers are the strong are as strong as like seven or eight chimpanzees all hill people have superhuman strength they don't have the knowledge to use it for world dominance. Um, and that is good. What they don't know won't hurt us. Like if this three-year-old that wandered away from the home and was missing and the um, sheriff's deputy, canine deputy, found the child, and I'm going to show you the body camera. It's adorable, by the way. Poor little guy. If that three-year-old was aware that he could King Kong all of uh, West Michigan in a rampage. He could. Um, as it was, a toddler was cold and crying and upset. But if the kid got pissed, um, you know, God knows the Grand Rapids skyline would be in rubble. If that child just went north, it'd be like, in that Hulk movie um, where it was the one Hulk one that uh, Ang Lee made where um, Nick Nolte is in it. And then they're looking at the map and all of a sudden the Hulk is jumping from spot. That's what the kid would do with Hill Jack power. Again, Hill Jacks aren't aware of their strength. Uh, Dan speculates it is because of the PFAS in our water. Yes, I've heard that too. The speculation that it is the poison in the water. Uh, Tophus says they also lack brain power though. Yes, it's brute strength, you know. Um, people in Van Buren County, they don't eat like you and I. Uh, moms just shit right in the kid's mouth. Donut Dan says, that is my county. Tophus says they eat raw deer and roadkill. 
Rich, being silly, says the officer stopped the kid by stepping on his mullet. Well, I guess this um, this officer, he has a, a canine with him, canine cop, and that's like this, co- this canine cop's thing. The dog is really good at finding kids. It's done it like two or three times before. Now, so they, uh, you know, the dog gets the scent of the kid. And then before you know it, this moment right here happened. Audio check, video check. This is great. I actually love this. Hey. At this point, the cop can hear the little one. The dog has, has caught the, the dog's just sitting next to the kid. Hey. You got crying. You got crying. Hey, buddy. Hey. hey. she says i want my mama i know it's okay it's okay okay now this cop is really rolling the dice here you see that kid could kill him that kid could kill him i know it's okay it's okay oh man i love that uh nbc news did a did a story a piece on this this guy this cop this canine he's getting all sorts of recognition police in van buren county michigan racing to find a young boy there was a three-year-old young child that crawled out of a window uh wearing nothing but a diaper making that incredible rescue okay now i didn't expect this guy to be uh brown van buren county they uh i thought they had like some policies there that's excellent i love that that tells me that van buren county is a little progressive and i love that dog look at that dog's face that's a face of a dog that says yeah you can pet me but you realize you are one word away from getting eaten and I know I'm goddamn handsome. Deputy Eric Calhoun arrived to assist with his longtime partner, canine deputy Kuno. The first challenge, finding the child sent after a frantic search by his family. You start to just get nervous because we know that there's water around the property where the child lives. Precious minutes ticked by. Finally, nearly 200 yards from his home, Kuno caught what he was looking for. Hey, buddy! Hey! Calhoun letting his partner of seven years lead the way. You kind of just stand back there and, and hold what we call the dumb end of the leash and just hang on. Kuno able to retrace that child's path till finding a precious footprint, letting everyone know they were closing in on their mission. Oh. I know. A mission accomplished. Kuno doing what he does best. What a feeling to bring that child back home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably best feeling within the job. It's like it's like a superpower to have that dog. I mean, you've got the power. It's just the latest chapter in a storied career for the eight-year-old Belgian Malinois. Oh, those are those those are super dogs. We've uh, we featured Belgian Malinois on this show. Those are the ones that climb walls. Okay. Kuno's located six missing kids, several suspects, and even endured multiple stab wounds two years ago when he was sent in to catch a suspect. There's a good chance that that poor son of a bitch who got eaten by that dog. The canine's going to be shipped immediately to the Michigan State University for the injuries. After a full recovery, Kuno was back at it, serving his community and saving lives. A career this veteran officer may soon be celebrating with retirement <gasps> it's just time for him to re, you know get ready to retire and just relax and you know finally be a dog that just can relax at home till then kuno enjoyed perks of a job well done a chicken dinner for a hard-working canine that stays on the trail no matter what look at how handsome Morgan he Chesky, is nbc news the dog's cute too <laughs> uh. man i love that story that is great <laughs> Tyler writes, the cop said, finding lost kids is my favorite part of the job. Second only to beating up black people 
Oh no. <laughs> I wanted to drop some of those jokes during the uh cop fire department uh hockey game, but I was like, oh no, I gotta keep this Eric Zitudian level of uh interaction here. It's a little bit of a touchy subject. Uh, Tofus says, I'm telling you that cop is not a hill jack. He speaks clearly. Oh, I know. Absolutely. There isn't even a discernible language to most people that live in Van Buren County. They communicate with the grunts and skiffs. <laughs> Amanda could communicate with those people. Tofus says that dog can run 30 miles an hour. Tofus says Hill Jacks still barter. Oh, big time. No one even makes any money there. Love that story. That's a good one. You know what else I love? The announcement I heard that uh, Jake Paul is going to fight Mike Tyson. Oh, okay. Now, Jake Paul, the YouTuber, he took a crash course in boxing and got in shape, and he's been pummeling losers. Okay? He hasn't fought. He, first, he fought uh, like an NBA player or something like that, and now he's fight, he's been fighting all these losers and shit like that, and... uh Mike Tyson has agreed to fight him. Now, I want to see this because I want to see Jake Paul get killed. I'm not sold that Jake Paul is actually worth anything as a fighter. So even, I mean, this would be great for Iron Mike because at 57 years old, to kick a guy's ass, that is what, 25 I mean, well, let's let's be honest here. Um, Mike Tyson could beat up 99% of the population right now. But this guy thinks he's such hot shit. Uh, Jake Paul, he's um, 27 years old. And he likes to look at himself as a, a legitimate boxer. I think he's just a goof. Uh, wanting to be a boxer. I love the idea of Iron Mike fighting him. This is a compelling storyline. So now I've seen video of Tyson training at age 57. See if I can pull some up. Tyson training 2024. Um, his hand speed is still uh, nuts. His punch power is remarkable. Looking for a decent enough uh, clip. Here. His footwork still quick. I'll show you that in a second here. Okay, you may have heard it. There we go. There's Iron Mike. That's crazy. Holy shit. In the ever-evolving world of boxing, one name that continues to defy expectations is none other than the iconic Mike Tyson. At 57 years old, Tyson isn't just a relic of the past. He's a force to be reckoned with in the present, showcasing a level of skill and finesse that puts fighters more than half his age to shame. Recent sparring footage of Tyson has left fans in awe the man is not just throwing punches. He's dancing around the ring with a grace that belies his age. It's a testament to Tyson's unparalleled athletic... Did you see what he did there? I saw a documentary about Mike Tyson. Cus D'Amato, his trainer, he would um, do a footwork maneuver that all of a sudden he's to the side of the opponent and then able to throw a punch down low like this. With Watch a grace right. that belies his age. Watch this, that. It's a now he's to the side. Testament to Tyson's Boom. unparalleled. Boom. His footwork to get 
literally out of hand's reach of the opponent, but up close to be able to punch him in the kidneys or the liver or something like that with one of those power shots. Athleticism. It's part of, uh, it was described in the piece as uh, peekaboo style. So he gets low and he's behind his hands and then he peeks out and then the next thing you know, he's at your side and he's punching your liver to pieces. And commitment to staying at the top of his game. What adds a layer of depth to Tyson's recent endeavors is his transition into coaching. It's not just about reliving past glories. It's about passing the sport. When Mike Tyson is aimed to hypnotize the mind, Come on. to aspect Show logical him. guidance to his success. You know, in the psychologically, he believes in the mind. And you really couldn't do that just by... T- All right, that's enough of that. Anyway, he's fighting Jake Paul. So I'm excited for that guy to get his ass kicked because he's the fucking asshole. Mike Tyson. One of the world's greatest and most notorious boxers. Now going head to head with polarizing YouTuber turned fighter, Jake Paul. Netflix announcing the two will face off this July at at and Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Oh, no shit. A live streaming exclusive for I- That will sell out. That every, every seat in there. Mike Tyson is the biggest spectacle, sports spectacle ever. And, um... There's a lot more interest in it now, now that he's 57 years old. All that had to happen was time had to pass because 20 years ago, um, no one gave a shit about Mike in, in those fights. He was fighting losers, okay? And not that he's any better now at 57, but the, since the matchup is against Jake Paul, and it's been a long time since we've seen Tyson fight in something like this, um, yeah, that's a, a high interest level. Every I, I'm going to watch this. Iron Mike, it's just one of many main events. And because everybody hates Jake Paul, they want him to actually die in the ring. His Hall of Fame career. I'm the best, you know what I mean? I sometimes I don't want to believe in myself, but it's the truth. At 20 years old, he became the youngest boxer to win a heavyweight championship, a record he still holds. But Tyson also quickly became known for his erratic and oftentimes violent behavior including this brawl during a weigh-in, lashing out at reporters. Put your mother in the straight jacket, you punk-ass white boy. And, of course, the infamous 1997 Ooh. match where he bit off part of Evander Holyfield's ear. Oh, Mike so Tyson. In recent years, Tyson has found a new generation of fans while starring in the Hangover <laughs> movies, hosting his own podcast, Hot Boxing, and launching a weed business. Okay, yeah, all Mike does is smoke pot. He's always stoned. He's actually been out of the ring since June 2005, except for an exhibition event in 2020 against Roy Jones Jr. Oh, right oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Tyson will be 58 years old when July's match takes place. But with videos on his social media pages showing he's still in Iron Mike shape, many are wondering how he'll square up with Jake Paul. Look at how fast he is. Holy shit. Well done. The 27-year-old gaining internet fame on Vine and YouTube years ago, raking in millions of followers, but also controversies of his own. In the last several years, he's turned his focus to fighting facing several MMA stars and winning while taking on an agitator persona. And Paul sticking with it. Today, he posted this video where he inserted himself in Mike Tyson's most iconic career moments and in another tweet wrote, quote, time to put Iron Mike to sleep. Separately, both Tyson and Paul have publicly welcomed a matchup between each other. Sign the contract, big boy. Sign the contract. Oh, hate him. Contract. They were talking about him fighting you or you fighting him. I'll beat these. <laughs> 30 day the box and I can fight anybody. Yet there doesn't seem to be bad blood between them. Paul joining Tyson on his podcast in August, thanking Tyson for everything he did for his career and for the sport of boxing. Oh, no, don't do this. Come on. You're an amazing person, man. Well, thank you. Thank I you. wanted to say I wanted to say that like thank you for the opportunity that you gave me to be on the Nate Robinson. Don't be likable. Vincent Card. Because none of this would have happened without that opportunity. One thing's for certain. Oh, come fuck. July, with a stadium capable of holding... Oh, no, that yeah, come on now. You got to you gotta do like Muhammad Ali. Remember what Muhammad Ali did to Joe Frazier? He, was, he, was, he just murdered him. 80, he, would, he couldn't stop belittling him. They, like, he like hated him. 
thousand fans and Netflix boasting 260 million subscribers, a lot of sports fans and non-sports fans will be tuning in for this mega event. And with that, Sam Brock joins us tonight from the Telemundo Center in Miami. So, Sam, this is a major get for Netflix, right? Usually boxing, you remember way back in the day, was on pay-per-view. Uh, even to this day, you sort of have to pay to stream it. What do we know about the streaming event on Netflix? Yeah, I'm really glad you brought that up, Tom, because I still remember those days of pay-per-view boxing as well. Mayweather and Pacquiao a decade ago when people were shelling out $75, $100. In this case, if you have a Netflix subscription, you're going to get this fight. So think about the changing economic. No shit. That's awesome. I'm mix of that. Then I actually have one. Netflix, this is only their third live streaming sports event, preceded by an exhibition match between Rafael Nadal and Carlos Alcaraz in tennis. You had a Formula One crossover with professional golfers. This is by far and away the biggest event they have staged so far and certainly could be a window into the future for where we see live sports, whether it's Netflix or Apple TV. A lot of the traditional providers are going to be facing some competition. And oh, by the way, in case you were wondering, Jake Paul, the betting favorite right now, the people like the young gun. Oh, you're fucking crazy. I'm so happy this is happening. He's going to get the fuck kicked out of him. Over Iron Mike. Tom? That is so sad. And Sam, I know you're a big fan of boxing. <laughs> that is so sad. Boxing, you stay in shape. We don't know how much Iron Mike and, and Jake Paul are getting paid for this. But uh, if I were to yeah. offer you a million bucks, would you fight Mike Tyson? Would you get in the ring? No. I don't think if you offered me $10 million, I would get into the ring with Mike Tyson. I don't know if you remember 1997. You. He bit off I'm a man's ear. So, yes. No yeah. thanks. <laughs> I'm with you. All right, Sam Brock. Very honest. Oh, my God. I have got to bring... Uh, now, I'm not going to bring him in right now because he's probably sleeping, but um, two of my favorite people who know a thing or two about um, fighting sports are Doug and Dougie from Bosco's. That's like their thing. They fight, both of them, um, and they they follow. So I cannot wait to pick their brain on this show about Iron Mike taking on jake paul this is the most interesting thing in uh in the in the uh, fight game that i've heard about in a long time i mean you got diehard mma people who love all the ufc events and and uh, i i certainly uh, can appreciate what ufc does uh but this is uh this is fucking cool because i can't stand jake paul the only thing i don't like is that they're chummy with each other Stevie says, screw that rapist. Yeah, you're right. He he did. Okay, there's that. Now, I don't know why. I don't know what it is about him, but I'm over it. Isn't that ridiculous? Um, I, I, that, 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 I know that sounds horrible. But it's kind of like OJ. You know, nobody gives a shit anymore that OJ cut two people's heads heads off. We're all like, ah, there's the juice. I I uh I I support Mike Tyson, the guy who is uh convicted of rape. How can that possibly be? That is so unbelievable. But I am. I want the guy to win. I want him to beat the shit. I love Iron Mike. I had Iron Mike on the old WBBL show. I don't know if we've gotten to it yet on the Lost Zane recordings. Um, Badger7419 says it'll be like Apollo against Drago. Drop the towel. Um, Tofa says Jake Paul is stupid. His brother is stupid and a con man. The whole Paul family is a giant piece of shit. Aram writes this Jake, this guy, Jake Paul must have seen the video of Tyson training. Is he stupid or does he know something we don't? Well, um, Jake Paul has, I don't, you know, I don't know if it's because of the people he's fought, but, um, he, he's done very well in all these fights. All right. So uh, maybe he just has a false sense of uh, false sense of security of uh, security security. 
Uh, Tophis says, I'd rather Mike be stone most of the time, safer that way. Uh, and, and he doesn't like that uh, Jake Paul votes for Trump. Again, we get back to that. Chris uh, K says Vegas has Chris Paul or uh, Jake Paul at three to one. Cole says the rapist is way more likable than Jake Paul. He is Stevie. You got to get on board and support this rapist. You must be saying yes to the rapist in the uh, Jake Paul, Mike Tyson fight and say, everybody fists up for rapist. All right, how about in an ideal world, they both punch the shit out of each other and die on the mat? Would that be acceptable? Nick says, I think Jake Paul has some allegations against him too. Yeah, at least Mike did the time. You know, I don't know. Do we live in a day and an age? How come we can live in a day and an age where a person... I mean, I guess it depends on who you talk to. If a person goes to prison and does the time, like if a judge says, all right, I find you guilty and you're going to prison for this amount of time. And then you walk out of prison and you say, boy, I'm glad that's over. I've learned my lesson. I don't ever want to do that again. I feel so bad at my behavior. I just want to live my life and, uh, and make amends. Does that work? Does that work? Like if, like Mike Vick, you know, I talked about this earlier in the week. Mike Vick, you know, uh, he came out of prison wearing like Paw Patrol gear. And then everybody was like, oh, he's, he's, he's revitalized himself. He's no longer, he doesn't, he's not being mean to animals anymore. And he served the time. Get him back in the, in the NFL. Okay. Amanda says, no, it does not work. Look at what happened to Michael Jackson. A jury of his peers found him not guilty, yet the court of public opinion took him to town. It's bullshit. Well, yeah, but that's different because Michael Jackson raped children. So that, that doesn't, that isn't even close to what I'm talking about. I'm talking about someone who goes to prison. I'm talking apples and you're talking oranges. I'm talking about people that are actually convicted and then go to prison. You're talking about a guy who put his dick in kids and then was not found guilty and got away with it. That's entirely different. Just because Michael Jackson was found not guilty of, um, of putting his dick in kids doesn't mean he didn't. Everybody knows he did. I mean, who is... Who in their right mind actually thinks that Michael Jackson did not uh, eat out the asshole of a child? You know, everybody knows that that happened. There's no one in America other than one stupid idiot who thinks that. All right. Hold that thought. I have to go potty. All right, coming up today on the Patreon. First of all, um, I, I I can't I can't help but uh, notice Amanda is really really going hard on her love of a kid toucher. Everyone in the audience knows that Michael Jackson really 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 loved us. Uh, children sexually there are books written about it there's audio of michael saying how much he wants to put his ding dong in a child it's it's terrible uh despite all of that somehow the evidence didn't stick the jury was paid off and um i don't know what happened but somehow he got away with it and he went back to immediately uh violating children And then he died and everybody forgot about it and no one cares anymore. Somehow he got away with it. It's this, it's, it's as bad as OJ Simpson. 
It's worse, in fact. Children. And uh, Amanda loves that he was successful at doing that. And now she's over here spewing nonsense about him. All right. And, and she's getting everybody all pissed off. Kenny has turned on her. Tophus is just letting her have it. Uh, Dan is, he's involved. Aram wants in. He says, can Zane and Amanda debate this out? There's nothing to debate. You know, uh, all I'm doing is, is, is pointing out what's unfolding before our very eyes. Bob says these people were found not guilty. Let OJ golf in peace. Agreed. Let's continue to enjoy M- MJ's music and let Casey Anthony start her daycare center. Agreed. They beat the rap. All right. It's gone. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes, uh, sometimes a judicial system, one gets by the goalie. It just happens. There is a real, real bit of heartache going on uh, with the audience. Rebecca <laughs> writes probably the best joke of the show. Leave it to a MAGA supporter to defend a child rapist. <laughs> oh, no. Hey. Hey, mom. Hey, dad. Anyone who listen? I don't know if your mom and dad are around. I don't know why I started with that. Hey, guys. So today I'm going to listen to MJ and Ben Shapiro. Oh. I love Ben Shapiro and Michael Jackson because he's a pedophile. Oh, my God. Dofus says that is a fatality by Rebecca. It's true. That was a fatality. She's got to be furious with that one. Now, I didn't say it. All I did was read it. Holy crap. Was that something? Uh, on today's Patreon, I'm moving on now. Um, on today's Patreon. Out of beautiful the great state of New Jersey. You got the white kids basketball, the rich white kids basketball team taking on the black poor kids basketball team in the state playoffs. Uh, Win in advance. Loser goes home. The black kids are winning. The black kids from Camden are beating the rich white kids from Manasquan. Time is winding down. Manasquan is down by one. They got like half a second left. Some dude throws up a like full court basket shot. Basket shot. Full court shot. And it goes in. White rich kids win. They storm the court. Rich guys are throwing money in the air. Yeah, white power. Yeah, all this shit. And then the refs talk it over. They go, the buzzer went off before the ball left his hand. No basket. Black guys win. Black power. So that's it. They win. However, the white guys look at the replay and the replay shows that The ball clearly left his hand and did count. So the white guys are like, hey, so what the fuck? And uh, that's where I'm going to leave it. This is now blowing up. This story is on fire. And like the Supreme Court has to, I'm not kidding you. A judge has to weigh in to decide 
the fate of this fucking deal. Like the uh, a local judge, it might even be the state Supreme Court, has to actually decide, oh, it's such a ridiculous story. You won't believe this. And now you've got, oh, of course, the white guys are going to try to overturn it on the black guys. Oh, my God. It's all everybody's pointing fingers. There's a race war. Oh, my God. We will talk about that on the Patreon. Wait till you hear, um, ultimately, how this worked out. Tofa says, oh, my God, yes, I want to see it now. Oh, no, I was saying that about something else. Um, I agree. Tofa says, that was the bus driver in Chicago who uppercutted the woman on the, off the bus. Rich calls it the greatest uppercut ever recorded. Tofa says, I want to see it now. Donut Dan says, the team that has the best attorney will win the game. Uh-huh. All right. Yesterday on the show, we talked about the Boeing jet that caught on fire. And um, the pilot managed to, the, he gets up there 15 minutes in, he's, you know, ascent, and then the engine catches on fire. And he uh, he's like, oh, my God. And he turns it around and lands the plane back in Houston. A couple things. First of all, I woke up this morning. And um, Nick, who's in Houston, I had forgotten. Nick is a um, air traffic controller. And he was the one working, Nick writes, when the, the pilot whose plane was on fire, and he said, ah, yeah, air traffic, uh, yeah, we got uh, engines on fire, and uh, we're completely in flames, and uh, we'd like to put it down. Uh, slow descent if we could at uh runway five nine or seven uh, doobie uh, flim flam uh, right away is that uh, possible there what's your weather like well the guy receiving that call was nick he writes i was listening and i heard you talking about united eleven eighteen, the flight with flame shooting out of the engine i was the guy getting that call when they declared the emergency as they were departing Houston. I got them pointed back towards the airport and moved everyone else out of the way. Nick was like all this air traffic and he had to divert all that shit while that fucking plane is coming in burning. He says it all happened within a matter of about a minute. The pilots sounded pretty freaked out. I'm glad they got down safely. It was crazy to see it on the news after. Keep up the good work. Love your shows. God damn. That is fucking nuts, Nick. Um, You have seen Nick on the uh, live streams when we do Ben and Eric. Uh, Houston, we have a problem, but at least the uh, door didn't fall off. Uh, some teen Wong, Amanda writes. Kenny says, does Nick have a job similar to, <laughs> to Jane's dad? You didn't even need to say on Breaking Bad. Yeah, that's his job. That is his job. I can't imagine that kind of pressure all day, every day. Woo. It seems like that is a job that would fit Nick. He seems pretty uh, unfazed. You know, you got to have somebody like that. Who, uh, if planes are falling out of the sky, they're like, okay, let's get it done. Let's figure this out. You know, you want that type of person. Aram says, uh, air traffic controller has to be the most complicated job. I only know what I've seen on Breaking Bad. Yeah, we don't know. That means we don't know. It could be easy. It looks, frankly, I, I can't agree with that. It looks like you got triangles with numbers on them and they move across the screen. Yeah, hey, look out for that. Hey, you, turn around. Hey, you, stop hijacking. Aram says, I would love to ask him questions. Well, I'll tell you what. On the next Ben and Eric Patreon podcast, if Nick's there, we can do Ask an Air Traffic Controller. So start thinking of things now. A 
Linda says, I was on a plane that once had trouble with the landing gear. Fire trucks lined the runways. We landed scary as fuck, but everything was fine. I had that happen too. They didn't know if the gear was down. And we landed in Baltimore. And um, I remember it was Free Beer Hot Wings. The whole, pl- the whole show could have died. And there was the same thing as fire trucks on the runway. Like, oh, God, no fucking shit. Because you can see them as you're flying in. They're like a mile from the from landing. It's like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Not good. And then we put it down. You can tell there was tires that had... Uh, the announcement in, when he said, oh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're getting a little bit of a readout issue here. It uh, shows that the... Uh, Landing gear is uh, might be compromised. Uh, we're not exactly sure if wheels are down, but uh, we're going to put it down anyway, and um, we won't know until we land. So, uh, attendance, if you could brace for impact, please. So we were um, seat belts buckled, heads down, hands over our heads on landing. I don't know if you had to do the same thing. And so we thought he was going to do the old Sully Sullenberger or Sully Sullenberg. Is it Berg or Burger? I think it's Berg. This was, um, yeah, this was after Sully. I think it was after Sully. But that's what we were, um, that's what we were picturing. Uh, attention, ladies and gentlemen, this is, uh, this is your captain speaking. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to uh, land with a little bit of uh, concern, uh, just a little bit of oddness, nothing big. Uh, but we're understanding that the uh, flight gear uh, may not be down. So when we uh, put the plane down on the uh, runway, we may actually be uh, having the fuselage land. Uh, could be a uh, large amount of sparks to go with uh, 70 degree temperatures and uh, winds out of the south southwest with numerous fire trucks uh, lining the runway uh, in case of uh, uh, jet fuel uh, ignition you'll definitely know it uh, you'll see the sun shining bright and uh, flames will be uh, throughout the cockpit and uh, smoke as you'll be inhaling that and uh, your death will be uh, quite quick some of you in the back may not actually die, and uh, there could actually only be like burns over 70 or 80% of your body. We'll try to get you landed and get you uh, to your destination safely. We want to thank you for flying United. Thank you. Over. Take a look out the right side of your window. You may see the fire trucks getting the s'mores ready. Dan writes. All right. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, this show is kept alive by my sponsors. Thank you. First of all, uh, hire me on Cameo, cameo cameo.com slash Eric Zane. The Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage at 231-332-6505. Get your mortgage. First time. People, first-time home buyers are encouraged to call. You're put to the front of the line. 231-332-6505. Mario knows that first-time home buyers become second-time home buyers, and you will use him. Please mention your old pal, EZ. I'm not going to lie. Mario was a little concerned. He's like, I don't know, man, the market. I just, I, it, people just don't, aren't getting mortgages. I go, hang tight. Tie a knot and hang on, Mario. You're going to make it. 231-332-6505. Did you hear Joe Biden yesterday? Our economy is strong. People go out and buy a fucking house, for God's sake. Thank you to King's Room Barbershop, three locations, Caledonia, uh, Northland Drive, and at 821 36th Street in Wyoming. Kingsroom.net. A haircut's going to set you back 19 bucks. If you are a sport clips... Lady Jane's, Jude's, Zach's, or any other place where you get your hair cut. Uh, I want you to try King's Room Barbershop once, right now, today, or the next time you need a haircut. Kingsroom.net for exact location and hours. Grand Rapids Gold are in action uh, Saturday. I will see you there. GrandRapidsGold.com for tickets.
Go see a gold basketball game. We've got five more remaining counting Saturday. So uh, go see the gold as they try to make a push for the playoffs. Uh, The NBA champion Denver Nuggets uh, G League affiliate are your Grand Rapids gold. Impact Power Sports wants to make sure that you reach out to them if you're looking for some fun. Could be an ATV, UTV, side-by-side, an e-bike. Those are awesome. Maybe a Yamaha golf cart. They can trick that out. In fact, I'll be with Impact Power Sports today at DeVos Place. It's the outdoor show, a.k.a. Hill Jack Show. One to three today, I'll be at the outdoor show with of all people lomas brown he's a big pal of the folks over at impact power sports i think lomas has given away a yamaha golf cart that's made out to look like a detroit lions helmet or something i don't know anyway lomas and i will be there hopefully he'll call me dan again dan impact power sports booth at the outdoor show today one to three uh paintball war number 24 the april aggression Happens Sunday, April 28th. Uh, Let's get the Mexicans together and the Hondurans and the Whites for another paintball war that we're going to call the April Aggression on the 28th of April. Get it on your calendar. Pencil it in. We're doing it at uh, TC Paintball. Book your own event today. I've got a cannabis, medical cannabis facility for you to buy your cannabis from. Green Medicine Shop in Greenville, Michigan. Yes, it is a medical facility. There's a lot of good positive that comes with that. Cleaner burn. Less yeast, less mold. They have to. Medical standard cannabis is much higher when it comes to uh, lower amounts of those not-so-great things. All right? A less harsh consumption of the cannabis. Plus, no excise tax. So 10% does not go out the window for the state with medicinal cannabis. You do need to have a med card. If you don't, get one at thegreenmedicineshop.com. It'll set you back 90 bucks, but with that you get a $100 in-store credit, so it's more than free. Get all your cannabis up in Greenville, Michigan at Green Medicine Shop and please mention EZ. Tax time with tag accounting. Call 616-301-9516. My big tax day is Sunday. I'm so excited. So excited to see my little tax hobbit. He's sitting there behind his little tyke's desk with his little calculator. Uh, uh, rat-a-tat-tat at the numbers. Uh, giving me the good news. Tag accounting online at tagcpa.net. And finally, this show is supported from the technological standpoint by blue frost it online at bluefrostit.com call them for your individual tech needs at 616-285-50 oh hang on where's my sign <clears throat> yesterday's asshole of the day it was jeff cartwright today we have a new asshole of the day brought to you by tc paintball I don't have any idea who, who it could be. I, I lose track in my brain of um, what we talk about. But I do have one that's kind of burning on there. I spelled it wrong. Any guesses? Do you have any guesses as who the asshole of the day is? Some of you... Uh, might say the Hill Jacks. Some might say Amanda. I don't know why you would pick Amanda. Why would Amanda be the asshole of the day? That's ridiculous. Asshole of the day is is uh, pedophile Michael Jackson, though. Just because we were talking about him, it makes me. It reminds me of the terrible crimes that he did, in fact, commit. Rich even gives a nomination to Megan for cat food lady. Uh, no, that that can't be. I mean, it's always innocent. I mean, she's uh, wired like I am with the ADHD, and sometimes she gets bored easier than others. So she's like this little, this little ball of energy, you know? 
She reminds me of like a uh, Amanda reminds not Amanda. Uh, Megan reminds me of like a Welsh corgi puppy. Okay, that type of energy. You're like a human, cute version of a Welsh corgi puppy, just bouncing around the room. That's what um, that's what Megan is. Um, Kenny says Amanda's gone. And I should call her and let her know who the asshole of the day was. That's a great idea. Hello? Hey, I was just doing the asshole of the day. Okay. Did you hear who won? No, I had to turn it off when you were doing airport voice because it was getting annoying to me. It was getting annoying? Yeah. What do you mean? Because you, you were sounding gravelly and almost like vocal fryish, and I was, um, I'm getting ready to go into work, so I just was like, forget it. Sorry. Everybody loved that bit. No, I know everybody liked it, but I, you know, and I was alright with it at first, but then I just got too much. So. Hmm. Uh, pedophile Michael Jackson was named asshole of the day. What do you think of that? Um. I'm, I feel like there were a lot of other candidates you could have chose from, Jake Paul being one of them. Yeah, but he didn't put his ding-dong in a child. Well, first of all, we don't know that for sure, but... Oh, yeah, we do. Um, Come on now. Come on now. No, I, I don't like Jake Paul. His brother, I, I don't have a problem with his brother, um, but, yeah, I don't, I don't like Jake Paul. I want him to just fight KSI and get it over with, and KSI kick his ass. Tophus wrote, Defenders of Child Rapists think airport voice is bad that was me sighing by the way if you didn't yeah, know. I heard um, it I heard it. that was a terrible thing for him to say innocent to proven guilty and they did not prove him guilty all right and all right have a good I know all right. I know all right have a good day All right. Just hang up on her. <laughs> oh, God. All right. See you, folks. Till next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Talk to you. Wait to hear this story about the fucking basketball team on Patreon. This is what you got to do. I don't know why more of you don't get this. I saw a few of you did it when I was talking about getting fired this week a few of you did sign up for the free one and then you canceled it that's what you're supposed to do if you like it you like it and you stay with it i don't care again you just gotta sign up for free i had like 10 people sign up this week who just wanted to hear the story about getting fired shit wait till you hear this story about the goddamn basketball thing All right, I'll talk to you folks.